It's no secret that the Borderlands series has been in a pretty rough spot as of the last few years. I mean, pretty much ever since the release of Borderlands 3, we've seen fans from all over the world voice their distrust in Gearbox. While some of these fans do go a little too far, and I mean too far. The real fans' reasons for criticizing Gearbox are completely justified. Like when Borderlands 3 made me talk to Lilith every 5 minutes, or when I had to sit through this demon's dialogue. Oh, and don't even get me started on Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, because as much as I love the setting of that game, it's far from perfect. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Overworld. So, in today's video, I want to take a look at the decline of the game's quality, how the franchise hasn't evolved enough, the lack of communication between players and devs, what can be done to make the games better in the future, and how you, the players, have the power to change the course of the franchise entirely. Hi, my name's Drea. I try to make videos like this one every week on games that I enjoy. So, if you like that kind of thing, consider subbing, as I'd love to have you around. But anyways, thank you for your time, let's get into the video. First, I'd like to talk about the decline of the series. Gearbox had a golden ticket with Borderlands 1, as the game was seen by most people as a huge success, which, in turn, built a pretty sizable fan base right out of the gate. Now, some people have argued that because of Borderlands 1's success, it didn't have enough time to garner a core audience, such as other games like Far Cry or Assassin's Creed. Me personally, I don't agree with that, as the people who stuck with Borderlands 1 did so out of love for the game and really nothing else. <laughs> I mean, it definitely wasn't the DLCs. Now, with Borderlands 1 seeing all the success it did, you would think that the next game would have a hard time topping the first. But boy oh boy were we wrong. Borderlands 2 dropped and the fans went crazy. It was everything they loved about Borderlands just amplified up to 11. Don't get me wrong, the launch had a few issues and the main one was the time-gated raid bosses, which meant when you killed a raid boss, you wouldn't be able to do it again for a whole 24 hours. Thankfully, the system was removed with a patch shortly after the game released, but it was still a big problem that I'll never forget. Borderlands 2 has sold 28 million copies to date, making it the most purchased Borderlands game ever. So, it was safe to say that Gearbox had made an even better experience than the original. I mean, even the DLCs in Borderlands 2 were much better than the first game's DLCs. But, then came Gearbox's first misstep. Borderlands the pre-sequel. When the pre-sequel launched, players didn't notice the flaws right away, so everything went fairly well, but as time went on, people realized that target farming was gone, and the game just overall lacked features that the previous game had. This in turn, paired with the cut DLC season and 2K Australia being shut down, left a sour taste in the remaining players' mouths, which, in my opinion, made the Borderlands hate train start to form. Then, Gearbox made the biggest mistake they could've and dropped Borderlands 3. I personally enjoy the game, but come on, we have to be honest here and say that Borderlands 3 did not live up to the expectations that the 5 year wait had built up. Pair that with the bad writing and the bugs everywhere, players were rightfully pissed off. But that wasn't even the worst part. The worst part, in my opinion, is that instead of all the DLC content being attainable through one season pass, they made a second, which had extra skill trees for each character and a real raid boss. Something that people have been asking for since the launch of the game. This made players even more annoyed as the raid boss added had been leaked in a trailer for the game at launch. At this point, Gearbox was driving themselves into a brick wall fast. A couple years went by and Gearbox tried gaining some player trust back by releasing Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. But this was also a failure, as the game didn't even meet the slightest expectations that the fans had for it. So, you would think the studio would maybe take a step back and try to understand what the players wanted, right? Nope. They gave us new tales from the Borderlands, and that's where we stand today. Now, I'd like to talk about the evolution of Borderlands. The franchise hasn't evolved enough. What I mean by this is, when I play a Borderlands game, I always play them the same way. I'll pick my character, load in, play the story, get to endgame, farm a bit, then repeat. I do this because the game never incentivizes doing anything else. I mean, seriously, can you even tell me what's really different about Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 3 aside from quality of life features like sliding and mantling? When you think about it, Borderlands games are just the same game rehashed with quality of life features and a new story. And I know, I know, it hurts to hear, but you know it's true. And if you don't believe me, here are some examples. Every game has the same three skill tree types for every character. Every game relies on you making it to endgame and then wanting to play true Vault Hunter mode and sit through the story all over again. Every game has the same core gameplay loop and it's exhausting to play over and over and over again. The only game that even slightly strayed from the normal formula was Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. But 
sadly, it flopped due to the terrible post-launch support. It's the culmination of all these things that made the players completely burn out. It kind of reminds me of a little game named Call of Duty. COD and Borderlands have two completely different audiences, yet their problems somehow mirror each other. How? Because COD does the same thing that Borderlands does. They make the same game, just slightly different, then move on to the next one. I could even see Borderlands with enough dev power making yearly releases just like COD. But, anyways, hopefully that proved my point, on to the next. Now, we must talk about communication. The lack of communication between players and devs is hurting the games way more than helping. It is a tale as old as time. A developer makes a good game, they get caught up in the hype and success, then they plummet back to reality because the fans hate their new project. Why? It's because they never heard any of the feedback as they were too busy cosplaying Icarus. When devs communicate with their players and understand their audience, you get products like Elden Ring, Path of Exile, and more recently, X Defiant. These games are all praised and successful because they understand their core audience and listen to the player feedback. Gearbox has been notoriously bad at taking in feedback over the years. Just look at the nerf apocalypse in Borderlands 3. Nobody asked for what they did, yet they still did it because they thought it would help, but instead it did the opposite. Now, whether you think the nerf apocalypse was on purpose to sell DLCs due to power creep weapons or just a miscommunication between the devs and players, the point still stands. We didn't like it, voiced our opinions, and to this day, some of the main complaints had never gotten changed or fixed. This is what happens to games with bad player dev communication. But don't just take it from me. Take it from the plethora of communities, including ours, voicing their frustrations on devs not listening. So, what can be done to make the games better moving forward? Well, for starters, our last topic, communication. Players and devs communicating and listening to each other is vital for a happy dev team and satisfied community. Obviously, there are bad apples out there who will harass the devs over minor problems, and that is horrible. But... That doesn't mean that you can block off the people that want to see change and want the game to grow, as they are the ones who could provide the feedback that we genuinely think would help the games in the future. The second thing I'd like to see is events for the community hosted by Gearbox that are similar to The Hunt. But instead of the point being charity, it could be that, but on top of that, the winner would get put into the game, whether it's through references or even a legendary gun with custom red text made by the victor. I see this as a net positive for not only the community, but for Gearbox as well, because when the community can all rally behind something so positive like this, it brings more happiness instead of hatred. Now, this might be controversial, but the third thing I'd like to see is better writing with less catering. Let me explain. Borderlands has always been a pretty inclusive game from the jump, with most of the main characters being female. So, I'd like the writers to take a step back and think about what made the earlier games before Borderlands 3 so fun, yet so open to anyone. In my opinion, it was the use of dark and self-deprecating humor, as everyone from time to time loves some good dark humor. This also made it so that if something did come off as offensive, it was immediately turned into a joke and not taken seriously, which then takes the weight out of the subject. My example being Herbert in the Captain Scarlet DLC. Yeah, he was really creepy and pervy, but at the end of the DLC, you get to unalive him, so justice is served. That, to me, is what made the Borderlands series so good. It touched on dark and taboo topics, then made them funny. In more recent years, it feels as if Gearbox is scared to potentially get cancelled, and in my eyes it's absolutely ridiculous to focus on that part of the internet when the majority of people couldn't care less if there was some offensive jokes thrown around from time to time. Alright, now on to how you, the players, have the power to change the course of the games entirely. I've said this in one of my previous videos, and I'm going to reiterate it here. Your vote counts as much as mine or anyone else's for that matter, as long as you vote with your wallet. So, instead of pre-ordering the game, wait till release to gauge whether it's up to your standards or not. Then, if it's not, take your time and hard-earned money and use it elsewhere. I say this because investors will see a dramatic decline in profits and change will come. Money rules everything. So, hit them where it hurts. Their pockets. Make his pockets hurt. As complaining on Twitter doesn't really get you anywhere unless you have a decent following. No shade to my YouTube homies, but it's true. Anyways, that's everything that I wanted to touch on today. I made this video because there may be a Borderlands announcement soon, and I don't want the hype to blind the community's judgment. Don't get me wrong, if the game is revealed, get hype. Just be smart about the decisions you make after the hype part. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. No, just my